Welcome, Tom Hanks. They just brought Wilson with him. Wilson's got a mind of his own. <laughs> Hey, welcome back. This is the second episode for building the Sphere Robot for Tom Hanks so he can throw the first pitch for the Cleveland Guardians for the 2022 baseball season. If you have not seen the first episode, you'll be able to find it up here in one of the links or down below. Check it out. I'm about to disappoint one of the most famous Hollywood A-listers on the planet. The original spec for the robot was pretty simple. What I'd not taken into account was having him nod yes and no, and also the size of a real volleyball might be too small to look good on a camera. The torque the mortars can put out is good, but when one increases the diameter of the ball, the forces required to move it increase. So in this case, the mortars are capable of five inch pounds of torque. Now every inch you increase, the less force it can put to the road and forward motion. I've made a rule in anything that I've ever built for any special effect or prop is that the motor has to be at least twice as powerful as required. So when we spec these out, we made sure that they were twice as strong as they needed to be. My prayer is, is that's going to be enough to actually work in this circumstance. And I'm starting to wonder if it is. The problem comes from when you increase the sphere size, the volume increases are exponential. Now the motor not only has to use the torque to move forward, but it also has to use the torque to start the rotational mass of the shell moving. If we increase the size of the ball, the forces very quickly go over the forces needed to move it. Now as our host would say, in layman's terms, Wilson, you have a problem. What he's trying to say here in the words of the great Tim the Toolman Taylor, we need more power. <laughs> <gasps> Now remember the lightweight PLA stuff that I got all excited about in the last episode? Well, because it's 50% of the weight and still reasonably structurally strong, this is the stuff that's gonna save our bacon in this circumstance. It's gonna allow us to increase the size without increasing the rotational mass. Let me introduce you to Mike. Mike is the radio control driver that we got for Ghostbusters Afterlife, and man, this guy is awesome. After playing with the robot, I realized that I kind of lack the skills to make something like this roll and look good. Mike is the guy I need to call, and that's exactly what I did. While testing driving this little guy, I did not have the finesse to land him face up every time he stopped. This was a request from Tom, along with Wilson nodding yes and no. Whatever Tom Hanks wants, Tom Hanks gets. Neither was landing face up for Mike when he drives, but we cannot expect to have a great view of Wilson when driving him. We are, after all, not supposed to exist while he's outperforming. It's magic. We can't be seen. Ah, who put that there? I think we're gonna have to code this into the whole system. Which brings up the second issue Ian had. This landing face up part, it was something that turned out to not be all that easy. What we agreed on was to use these Roboticist servos. They come in a super small package. They're really torquey and you can program them. These also have an extra bonus of being a closed loop system. So that means that they not only take orders from the controller, they can send orders back to controller. So that way we can set things up so that the programmer knows exactly where they are in space and what rotations they've made. So, what ends up happening is that this talks to the microcontroller. The microcontroller talks to the servo and the servo can also give feedback on where it is to the microcontroller. All of this works out really well for making a robotic system. Things that it can send back for information are like the speed, how much torque, how much amperage, how much power is being drawn, where it is in space and how many rotations it's made. Lots of information can be gathered from these little guys. They are amazing servos. Now I can sit there and talk all fancy and I'm not going to pretend that I know how all of this works. I don't. That's why I hired Ian. Turns out the coding has taken way more time than expected. And way more expensive. Yes! 
Success. So Ian's worked it out. So you hit this toggle right there and Wilson will try to get face up. Now I want you all to try and build one of these if it really interests you. It's really not that hard. All the CAD files that you need are in a link down below on Onshape and all the coding and everything that you need is in there as well under the tabs. Those tabs at the bottom, man, I'm, I'm telling you something. For some of my projects, that is a lifesaver because I'm not looking for the documentation. It's there in the document. I'm scrambled, I'm Mr. ADHD. I do not keep things together in one spot very well. This CAD system is perfect for somebody like me, Mr. ADHD, with a side order of scrambled eggs and toe. Mm. Now, before we get back into the thick things, I want to thank Onshape for sponsoring this short video series. Seriously, this project would not have been possible if it weren't for this software. I've used Onshape in my work since Star Trek Beyond. It has helped me knock it out of the park continuously working in the movie business. You can do any of the computer-aided design that you need on your phone, on your iPad, or on your computer. And because of this, when I was working on large structures, I could be there in context with a problem making design changes and that is critical for everything that I do. While going over what a volleyball looks like I discovered this. This is pretty cool. Check it out on the CAD system. A volleyball is really just a sphere and then it has a bunch of planes that cut into it at different angles. And each one of those planes seems to do a slice that lines up perfectly with the way the panels of a volleyball line up. But when I discover things like this I always feel pretty cool because it's almost like a connection with the original designer because at that point I realized that that's probably how he was figuring things out. It's like, wait a minute, what if I cut it in slices? And that is what turned out to be what worked really well for him. I love this nerdy stuff. If you know how the panels of a volleyball were designed, leave a comment down below. And you don't have to cut a ball up with a a saw to you know find this out added bonus is is that when we hide all the other parts from this is each part has a flat face and that flat face sits down perfectly onto a 3d printer now that we have all this sorted out let's print out all the panels we're going to glue them all together i use little alignment pins to make sure everything stays nice and straight use a little bit of auto body filler to fill in the lines i don't like some sanding, some painting, and we now have what we can use for the platform or for this robot. Let's move ahead. I also think I've come across a Bob Ross sort of happy mistake moment. Here, let me show you. So these layer lines that you see here, right in there, they look like the stitches from a volleyball. Do you know what that means? Less sanding. Yes! Okay, back at it. Now we figured out the shell, how to make it lightweight and have it look really cool. We've also figured out all the electronics and making sure that it lands face up. Now what we need to do is make him look good. And this is going to be something that I am actually pretty good at. My father owned a sign shop. I have a family of artists and you know, I've always wondered why I was the engineer with a bunch of artists in the family. I, yeah, maybe I'm just multi-talented. I'm a polymath. All right, listen, I realize that I'm in a really cool position and I've met some amazing people and done some amazing things, but this is for Tom freaking Hanks. This needs to be my masterpiece. Oh yeah. Da Vinci, you got nothing on me, man, nothing. All right, snap out of it, back to work. Now that the technical part's done, now we can get down to the art of the project. This is where I kick ass. This is what... My approach must be perfect. My subject, Wilson. The palette, a volleyball. Texture, symbolism, mm -hmm. yeah. finger painting. Other, big, ostentatious, artistic terms. A sound like William Shatner. 
because his way of talking is so melodic and the tempo I'm so screwed.